HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On today's edition of HCAM News, Hopkinton Middle School Spring Concerts took place and much more. But first, Hopkinton Water Sewer Manager Eric Carty recently joined us to give us an update on the DPW and to talk about upcoming weather trends. Hello, everybody. We are here with Eric Carty, your water and sewer manager. Eric, how are you? I'm doing well, Tom. Thanks, as always, for uh, having me on. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we always love talking to you about what's going on at the DPW and, of course, weather trends. And we'll do a little bit of that today. Uh, before we get into the weather trends, can you talk about uh, what's been happening at the DPW? I know you guys have been uh, very busy, and now we're getting into uh, construction season as well. Yeah, we pretty much uh, you know, lucked out in terms of uh, major snowstorms this year, uh, which was good. So the guys, uh, and there was some uh, pretty decent icing events that they were out uh, quite a bit, but for, you know, for the most part, uh, didn't receive any uh, huge amounts of snow, which was good. Uh, we have had a lot of rain, so we've been dealing with some of the flooding issues. Uh, we've also had a lot of uh, leaks uh, lately, uh, so the guys have been uh, dealing with that and getting the system uh, back up and running, including a, a pretty big one that we had several weeks ago that pretty much affected the whole town. So thankfully, those only happen every uh, three or four years because they uh, just can really wreak havoc with the system. Uh, other than that, we're now into uh, you know spring mode. We're uh, getting close to the marathon, so all focus is on that. Um, both the highway, water, and sewer departments will be uh, out there. Which will be for us. We go out and we check all the water gates, make sure they're already. They're going to be paving downtown this week, so we'll make sure that all those boxes are leveled off and good to go, and uh, check that everything's ready in case there is an emergency. Uh, be able to respond in a, in a timely manner. I'm curious, uh, with the lack of snow, how are the water levels? So even though we haven't had a lot of snow, we've had a decent amount of rain. January, we had almost 10 inches of rain, uh, which was significant. Uh, we had just uh, about two weeks ago, too, uh, we had what was then forecast to be a pretty good snowstorm. Turned out to be all rain. So we had almost a total of uh, three and a half inches of liquid between the snow that we did get and melted that melted and the uh, rain that we had so for the most part we're starting out well with recharge uh i was just noting over on maspinock uh we're already uh, at a higher level than we were for the entirety of last summer uh, last summer was the lowest that i've ever seen the lake since i've been over there and it was always a foot below the spillway and never got any higher and we're already uh, you know approaching the spillway we're about eight, eight inches away from being full which is uh a good sign. Um, it's been quite the event. I'm sure everyone's seen it out in California. Uh, they basically call it an atmospheric river where uh, they just had storm after storm with uh, up in the mountains. It's been snow. They've had unprecedented amount of snow. They've had over 400 inches in some spots and that beginning to melt there. They've, they're finally out of a severe drought for the first time in three years. And as those storms, uh, they matriculate their way across the country and we end up being the beneficiary, if you want to call it that, of uh, what's left over. Thankfully, we haven't got it to the extent that they have, but we've had enough rains that uh, have been able to uh, sustain sustain the uh, the water so far. So the big thing is we always can have a wet spring and then get into summer and go right to dry. So every year when we we'll be ready to do our mandatory restrictions, which are required by the state, and I always put a letter out when I send that notification out to to remind everybody, we can't take it for granted that because if we've had a wet spring, it's going to stay that way. We still need to be very conscious of our use and and make sure that we're using it wisely because the weather can turn, as we know, pretty quickly into in drought. And it's forecast to be a warmer than normal uh, summer. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think California got all the snow that we were supposed to get, <laughs> or, or at least took ours as well. 
Um, so that's good. It's been uh, pretty wet so far, but yeah, of course, uh, you don't know if it's going to be uh, dry or not for the spring and the summer right. here. Uh, what's your uh, long-term predictions? Uh, you said the spring is going to be warmer than normal. Uh, can you give us an idea of how warm you think it's going to be and uh, what you think the spring and possibly summer is going to be like? Yeah, so I follow quite a few people that uh, they like to go back and they they look at what they call analogs and they look at similar years and how they set up, whether how the winter played out, how the spring is and how the uh, systems are setting up around the country. And right now, it, their forecast is for a, a wetter and actually kind of cooler than normal spring. But then when we hit summer, uh, for that to, to, to not totally dry up, but be drier or on average and then warmer than average through the summer. So they, they're they pretty much right so far on this uh, March. March has been uh, pretty wet and definitely colder. We've had some 60-degree days and actually got out golfing uh, a week or so ago. But... Uh, then we're back here. We're in the 30s again today. So, you know, it depends on the day. But uh, uh, with those storms coming in from the West Coast there, looks like we'll be alternating uh, back and forth between a little bit of storminess in at least through to mid-April. But uh, we're, we're not getting any snow. I think that's for sure, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty much that. Well, hopefully that's done. Although you never know, May 1977, I was a kid, but I remember that well. <laughs> yeah, it's quite true. a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're saying um a cooler possibly wetter. wetter spring and a dry maybe hotter summer warmer yeah warmer than average is the, the current forecast by the uh the experts <laughs> all right i like it um uh, eric uh thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us and uh as always it's good to catch up with you and we'll do it again soon all right. Sounds good. Thanks, Tom. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts recently hosted the Breakaway Exhibit featuring Bobby Gibb, the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. Here's a look. A public reception was recently hosted at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts to welcome a new art gallery display. The display is entitled Breakaway, and features the work of two formidable female artists, Bobby Gibb and Chelsea Bradway. HCAM's Ashley Simmons was on the scene. This work started in February of COVID, which is, I think, 2021. Um, I just finished the Front Steps projects in Southboro, and I... I'm not very good about sitting still. So I decided that I was gonna <clears throat> ask, put a Facebook announcement out there and ask women to come to our studio, which is in, this was, this time is in Framingham at the Mill of Contemporary Arts. And um, they came, lots and lots and lots of people came. And it was just pretty amazing. I didn't ask them, I didn't give them any direction. I would just say, come. And there was a very few things. There was like a stool, um, a chest, a ladder. I'm trying to think. I mean, there was a couple odd things around the studio that we used, but for the most part, people brought what they wanted. And the only thing I said to the people was, um, come as you feel most you, come as you feel most beautiful, most empowered, most powerful. And they did. So we would just sit and talk for a couple of minutes. And as we were talking, I would snap and I might be like, turn a little bit more towards the light. But that was really all I did. And they, they all came like just amazing. And there was um, some people had groups of people come all together. They called their friends and called their families. Some people just came on their own. I do There's a lot of them I do know, but there's a lot of them that I don't know, which was very cool. And now I do know them and I know their, their story, which is just really, really amazing, so. The show debuted during International Women's Month at the Lotvin Family Gallery and celebrates women's empowerment. I took away that I really, enjoy photographing women and I didn't realize 
someone actually said, do you just photograph women? I'm like, I like everyone. <laughs> um, but I think my mom was here. And growing up with her in the 70s, she was very empowering. Um, she left college to have me and then went back to college when I was in grade school at Smith. And then when I was in high school, she was working on her graduate degree. And when I was in college, she was working on her PhD. So growing up as an only child right from the beginning, um, I was definitely empowered. And this is like, like this oozes my mom, even though she says that this was all me. But she really, she really made me feel I can do anything and be anything. Um, so what did I learn? Your question is, I learned that anyone can do anything they want to do and everyone should feel good about themselves and empowered and they should not let anyone tell them otherwise. Well, I always loved to run. I mean, even as a kid, we all run. We all, we, we love to run. We're running around, we're playing games, we go to the beach, we run up and down and so forth. And everybody else stopped running, but I was still running. I loved running. I just loved to run because it gave me a sense of freedom and I run with the neighborhood dogs up in the woods. And I'd run and run and run and run. And then I'd flop down and I'd look up at the trees and the beautiful sun. And, and, and I think being an artist too, I, I appreciated nature. And I, I also studied science. I studied biology and physics and math and all those things that were, it, in those days, my mother would say, those are useless subjects for a woman. You, you know, you should take typing to have something to fall back on until you get married. This is in the 50s. 50s and uh, early 60s and so I was always kind of rebelling against that idea that as a woman your opportunities were so limited and you were you lived in this little box you know doing endless housework and never getting to fulfill your dreams that she had wanted to be a journalist and travel the world and here she was you know spending her days scrubbing the floor doing dishes and you know and so she she was unhappy I mean unfulfilled and, and there's no reason that a woman can't have a career and follow her dreams and be married and have children. I mean, it's, you can do the whole thing. So that's what I want, like broaden the horizons a bit. And so I was kind of rebelling against that. And I'd go up and run in the woods, and that's where I felt free and I felt alive. And the sun was kind of shimmering down through the trees, and I'd see a green field and I, just full of joy. And there was no, uh, no other way of expressing it than like running full speed across the the field and so when I first saw I first time I saw the Boston Marathon I'd never heard of it growing up in 1964 my dad and I went out to see it and I just fell in love with it I had never seen people running before and it was something that harked back to like something so fundamental about being human I mean standing on two legs and running you know uh, running together like this so I wanted to be part of it, and it was totally irrational, way outside the social norm. This is a cool thing. So I got the idea for this from um, Camilla Rainville. Her poem is Be a Lady, they said. And um, why am I blinking on her name? The woman from Sex and the City read it. I think it was like on YouTube, and I watched the YouTube, and I was... Miranda, whatever Miranda's name is, I'm blanking. Um, she read it, and it was so powerful. And it was all about... You can't wear a short skirt. You can't do this. A lot of can'ts. Can't, 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 can't. And I was like, well, bleep that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, 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 can. And I, that's where it came from. Again, COVID being just a lot of time on hands. I mean, I did still teach. That was still a thing that we were doing. But we also had more time because we weren't going to school. Um, we were doing it through Zoom. So... That's where it came from. And do you have any message for young women wanting to do something? Yeah, I say you can reach for the stars. There is no ceiling. Like, you know, Bobby Gibb, break that glass ceiling. Do what it is that you want to do. And if you don't feel like you can do it alone, grab your women or your girls or your ladies or your people, whoever it is, men. You know, I, again, I have nothing against men. <laughs> I married one. I have a son. <laughs> um, that's what I would say. I'd say, do it. Just do it. Forget what other people have to say and just do it. We are going to take a time out. A whole lot more ahead on HCAM News. Don't go anywhere.
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News. Recently, Hopkinton Middle School hosted their annual spring chorus and orchestra concerts. Here's a look at the wonderful events. Wow. 
time to tell you about some upcoming happenings in town you should know about on Saturday, April 1st, from 7.30 to 11.30, the Boy Scout Troop 1 will be hosting a pancake breakfast at St. John the Evangelist Church Hall, located at 20 Church Street, to grab some tickets. You can email pancakebreakfast at troop4hopkinton.com, and you can find more information on our website, hcam.tv. Spring sports is here, and we have our first games of the season coming up live on HCAM. It all starts with Boys Lacrosse on Friday, March 31st, as they welcome in Medfield. And on Monday, April 3rd, a lacrosse doubleheader as we have the boys against Ashland at 4, the girls taking on Norwood at 515. Then on Tuesday, baseball and softball, both games at 4 p.m., and Varsity Boys Lacrosse takes on Holliston on Thursday. For the broadcast schedule, you can head over to our website, hcam.tv, and you can also find all the links to the streams for these upcoming Hiller Athletic events. Our picture of the week, courtesy of the Montreal Canadiens NHL team, Congratulations to Hopkinton native Sean Farrell, who recently joined the Montreal Canadiens and got his first taste of the NHL on their recent road trip. He signed a three-year contract with the Canadiens at an entry-level rate. Congratulations to Hopkinton native Sean Farrell on making it to the NHL. Upcoming town government meetings include on Monday, April 3rd at 7 p.m. We'll have the planning board meeting live on HCAM. And on Tuesday, April 4th at 6 p.m., we'll have the select board meeting live on HCAM. To view all the upcoming town government meetings, head over to hcam.tv gov. And for more information about the meetings, you can head over to the town website at hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News, but don't worry, next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we'll be back with a brand new edition. For all of us at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. As always, we thank you for watching. Take care, be well, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.